I think everyone knows my name, I'm Les McFee, Mayor of Swan Hill. Firstly, on behalf of the Swan Hill Rural City Council, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians on the land on which we meet and pay our respect to the elders past and present. Great to see so many people here. We are getting to the culmination of this project that's been going for a number of years now. And I think it's sort of getting the exciting time we've got sort of designs now to show the people. The architects are present today. We've got Ben and Nick with us today. Um, Nick will be taking the notes in the back and Ben will be doing the presentation very shortly. Um, but they've taken on board a lot of the information that's been shared by the community up to this point in time as to where we go with this building. As you know, it started off with one building our place, which now we've got the two buildings, the entrance to the point of settlement, which we're talking about today, tourism and cultural hub, and we've got an information session tomorrow for the art gallery as well. That's tomorrow afternoon here as well. The four to six if you're interested in that one as well. So but today we're focusing on the tourism and cultural hub. And as I say, it's an exciting project. All this is the um, visitor information centre, entrance to the Pioneer Settlement, and a cultural centre for the um, Aboriginal community as well in there. And that will eventually lead to a big project we're doing on Panel Island as well. So without any further ado, you're not here to listen to me talk. We'll hand it over to the architect and he'll go through some slides and there'll be an opportunity for us questions at the end of it as well. So Ben, over Great. to you, mate. Thank you very much. Um, and thank you all for um, the opportunity to present to you and your time. Um, so uh, my name is Ben Wilburn. I'm a partner in Common Design Studio and we've been appointed by council to develop designs for the tourism culture hub um, over at the entry to Pioneer Settlement. Um, next slide, please. Oh, technical problems. No, we'll always get it. Um, great. Um, so, the, the first thing to note is um, we were appointed uh, earlier this year after uh, Pioneer Settlement was uh, added to the Heritage Register. Um, one of the uh, consequences of the registration um, of uh, Pioneer Settlement as a heritage place is that any development work that occurs within um, the precinct requires a heritage permit from Heritage Victoria. Um, so a lot of the work that we've been doing since our appointment is to look at the advice and direction that Heritage Victoria has given um, us as a project team and council more broadly around um, what they believe is an appropriate development on this site. So we looked at um, the context and characteristics of Pioneer Settlement as a place. Next slide, please. Um, including looking at the materials, um, the formal characteristics, so the shape of the buildings, their height, um, what materials they have, the shapes of the roofs, um, the characteristics of the, the landscape, um, and the ages and different things about all of the buildings that are, that are there. One of the things we did note though is that um, Pioneer Settlement is quite eclectic. It's predominantly um, buildings from the 19th century, but there are additional new buildings within the, the context of the precinct in particular, the building that supports the heartbeat of the very show. Next slide, please. Um, so the, the initial feedback that Heritage Victoria, um, and this was provided in writing before our um, engagement, was that um, their key concerns around development in this part of the precinct is about maintaining view corridors between the um, entry to Pioneer Settlement here and the gem um, in both directions, from the gem back to Pioneer Settlement and from Pioneer Settlement towards the gem, um, but also maintaining um, visibility and the integrity of the rotunda, um, which is a very key element of Pioneer Settlement from Heritage Victoria's perspective because it was designed by Royal Grounds. Um, and it's the only one of three original rotundas that are retained on the site. So that largely leaves us a, a development area here, um, which is the site of the Rose <coughs> Garden. Next slide, please. Um, so that, looking at within the context of the wider Pioneer Settlement, this is what we call a ground analysis, which is basically just identifying the footprints of all of the existing structures within the precinct. Um, include, and the um, the gem, it's not really a building, but it kind of takes up a bit of the site. Um, spoons, the gallery, the, um, the dock, the fire, and uh, the other key buildings within the site. Next slide, please. So one of the things that we did um, that's really informed our design response is looking at the footprints of all of the key structures around the site. Um, 
it, this one doesn't include the, the Harper in the Murray building, um, but it includes all of the other um, buildings within the Pioneer Settlement site. One of the things that we identified is that buildings with bigger footprints are generally made up of um, smaller buildings or smaller kind of roof forms that are aggregated together. Um, so generally you get things like a gable roof, it's multiple gables to form bigger footprints. Um, so you see that here and here, and in some kind of context here, we have multiple buildings aggregated together. That's quite common in older buildings from the 19th century, you have smaller things that are more manageable or were more manageable in terms of the construction technologies at that time. The proposed footprint is this one, and we're proposing to translate this identified characteristics of pioneer settlement into the new building. So one of the key, oh sorry, the key document that Heritage Victoria refers to in making assessments of any application within the heritage place is the Borough Charter. And one of the key um, guiding principles of the Borough Charter is that new insertions within heritage places need to be respectful of the characteristics of the heritage place, but need to be identifiably new and contemporary. There shouldn't be a replication of what's there, but they should respect the characteristics of the place through form, material, um, and uh, massive height, basically. Next slide, please. So we did a, a number of studies. Um, eight, it's actually more, we didn't include them all. Um, looking at different ways of translating that information, and we, we landed on um, the preferred option of option six. Um, for a number of reasons, but the main one is that it's the most direct translation of those historic characteristics that we identified. Next slide, please. So based on that um, information, this is where the proposed building is going. Um, you can see the, the roof here. Um, between the coach house and the rotunda. Um, next slide, please. So then we, we went through a number of plan options um, to look at how to lay out the building within that identified area, or that identified site. It was largely determined by Heritage Victoria's guidance. So the first option we looked at um, placed a large multi-purpose area to the um, north of that site, adjacent to the coach house, with entry in the middle, um, gift shop and merchandise and um, kind of seating area along the east, and back of house functions um, um, strung along Monash Drive to the, to the west and to the south. Um, the second option, so next slide please, and this is our preferred option, flips that arrangement so that the multifunction area goes to the south, the, uh, the back of house functions go to the north, with entry, seating area, merchandise, and reception and visitor information um, services in the middle. One of the reasons this is our preferred option is it allows us to put back a house to the north and provide a service entry where there's an existing crossover with the new road um, between the coach house and the new building. That provides really um, clear uh, back of house and service deliveries, waste removal and things like that, and um, keeps that clear of all of the operations of Pioneer Settlement. It also allows potentially for um, emergency vehicle access and we get a really good control of how um, services work into and out of the building. The other thing that it allows us to do is introduce this multifunction area um, to the south, which we can divide up into three separate rooms, or have as one big room, um, for when uh, school groups arrive. Um, and it allows us to bring visitors in, those large groups of visitors in, to a holding area and then into the space without taking them necessarily through the main reception area. One of the things with that is it means if you've got kids who've been on a bus for three hours, you're going to be a bit ready. Um, and it's really good to get them into the building, get them settled, get them in front of a video or audio, and get them, get them kind of calmed down, all that sort of stuff, before taking them into the precinct. And it allows you to continue operation for other visitors, independent of kind of those groups arriving. But they may be groups of 100, they could be groups of 30, they could be groups of 20, and different sizes. The flexibility of this arrangement allows us to accommodate all of those things. The other thing with this arrangement is that because it's in front of the ticketing line and can go through this space to go through into ticketed area, it means that this space could be used for a lot of other activities as well. So we could use this space for um, cultural education by traditional owners, 
um, as an extension of the work that's being done on um, Entel Island. It could also be used for other activities by council, it could be hired out for kind of key events and things like that. Um, we've also introduced a wet area for cleaning, um, for kind of production of art activities, but it could also be used for um, tea and coffee and other things here. So there's a great deal of flexibility that this arrangement allows for us, and that means that that space could be a real asset for both Pioneer Settlement but for the wider community as well. Um, the other thing we've been really conscious about is ensuring that we get really good visitor flow. Um, so visitors arrive, they can receive information about uh, Swan Hill, um, Pioneer Settlement, but also activities within the precinct, including Entel Island. Um, and then uh, visitors who may not have necessarily considered going into Pioneer Settlement, you can tell them about how great it is and provide a welcome into that precinct and provide ticketing if they're interested. Visitors go and do all of the activities within the precinct and then come back and exit through the gift shop, maintain the offer for souvenirs and other things so that um, you can capture some of that um, activity and also start to direct them out to other things that are happening in Swan Hill and the wider precinct. Um, the other thing that we've introduced in this option is a covered area to the east that does a number of things. One is it provides shelter from the sun, the glazing along that facade, but also it provides somewhere to sit so if you've arrived, you can sit down, think about what you're going to do while you're in the settlement, um, or come back and sit here after you've been through for the day. It provides a kind of space of respite um, for people kind of visiting or visitors within the centre. But also, if the weather's terrible, it means you can have um, guided experiences here um, out of the rain or out of the sun um, if you need to. Can we go to the next slide? Um, so we've also worked up a initial landscape concept for the project, um, which looks at um, using brick throughout the, the paving and running that brick paving through the building. So it really guides um, visitors to the entry, into the reception, through the waiting area, and then out into the, the settlement more broadly. We're really conscious of the two key um, movement pathways or axes um, once you arrive into the project. <coughs> One into Pioneer Settlement, but also <coughs> into Island. Both of those are given equal prominence and are equally important for movement through the Pioneer Settlement. Um, as you, and you can also see the um, service coming out here. Uh, Heritage Victoria are really, really um, clear about their prioritisation of the, the rotunda um, and very clear that we should move it um, and we should kind of respect the junction between the new building and the rotunda. So we've um, indicated a uh, um, potential entryway here, um, and we've kind of carefully stepped away from that rotunda, and we'll reinstate um, gates at this point. There was a discussion yesterday with uh, councillors about potentially making this a double gate to facilitate the operation of this precinct um, as for events and other things that may be run within that, um, allowing the rest of Pioneer Settlement to be closed off at the gates further over. Next slide. So here's an uh, indicative uh, material palette for the landscape. At this stage, it's really um, first pass. Um, but one thing we are really conscious about is ensuring that we're using um, local endemic plants for a variety of reasons. One, because they're important culturally, but also because we know that they're going to thrive here. Um, though what plants they are specifically, we'll work through as we kind of get through the project. Um, but that's something that we'll take guidance from um, council staff, but also traditional owners um, and other members of the community about what's appropriate to have here. Next slide, please. So that's where we're at with the, um, the building form. As I mentioned before, it's really derived from what we've observed within Pioneer Settlement and translating that in a contemporary way. Can we go to the next slide? Next slide, please. Thanks. Um, we also looked at a number of options for the development of this form. We looked at a flatter roof. Um, which are 30 degree pitch, and we've landed on a 40 degree pitch because that's more consistent with what we've observed within Pioneer Settlement. A lot of those older structures tend to have slightly um, steeper roof pitches. Um, so going back to that idea that we're translating and adapting what we've observed in the place and maintaining those characteristics. Next slide, please. Um, so looking at the materials, we can jump through the next one. And the next one, so these are the elevations around the, the building. Um, the material palette 
called the proposed material path for the building is very much about an interpretation of the existing materials that we've seen in Pioneer Settlement. So use of press red bricks, um, heritage zinc wall cladding and roofing. Heritage zinc is um, the older form of zinc glue. Um, so what you see is uh, roofing, particularly in the Pioneer Settlement, but also in kind of other um, historic structures in the region, will use uh, heritage, heritage zinc. Um, it looks like the crystals in the um, surface are much bigger um, and it's a bit more durable, basically. Um, it's similar in sort of price, it's just uh, it's an older product which we'd like to use. Uh, aluminium frame windows and doors, and then the use of um, <coughs> timbers throughout the building, both in terms of linings and also um, structurally. So we start to express the timber structure internally and also for some of the external elements. Next slide, please. So this, this is the view from the gem back towards Pine and Settlement. So you're starting to see the use of brick, the use of the heritage zinc on the roof, the overhanging um, space to the east, allowing for people to kind of gather as they come out of the building. Um, and we're also proposing a large uh, fireplace um, on the northeast corner to allow people to kind of gather um, around that space for events and guided um, experiences. We're retaining the locomotive um, and the rotunda which you can see on the left. Next slide please. So this is the view back from Pioneer Settlement towards the gym. Um, again you can see that space to the east, the use of the materials and the scale of the building is consistent with the coach house. Um, and next slide please. So this is the view along Monash from the gym with the rotunda in the foreground and the proposed building in this location. The positions of these views have been selected um, on the direction of Heritage Victoria. Um, Heritage Victoria are really concerned about how the building sits within the precinct. So they, they uh, were explicit about the requirement for the view from the gem towards Pioneer Settlement, from Pioneer Settlement towards the gem and along um, Monash Avenue. As we develop the project more, we'll get more detailed views of the building and show how the materials are broken up how um, more uh, detail and variation is introduced into this facade, um, as well as what the material kind of looks like. This is, uh, it was noted in uh, the presentation to the councillors yesterday that this is a little bit dull for um, zinc alone, or uh, air chip zinc. So we need to kind of work on this view to show it a bit more reflected. Over time, that material dulls off, but when it's new, it'll be a bit more shiny. Um, can we go back to the elevations, please? So back five slides. Uh, one more, please. Okay. So it's worth noting um, that the highest point of the roofs are lower than the pitch of the um, coach house. Um, yes. There's so much to take in. Would would I be permitted to take several photographs so that I can sure. look at them at, yeah. at a slower pace? Of course. Yeah, so um, much to come. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Thank you very much. Um, there's also, and it's probably easier to take photos um, of the printed boards. You'll get better quality outcome. Thank, thank you for that. That's fine. No um, so it's, it's worth noting that the building is lower than the coach house. Um, we've set that as a datum as the highest point and the building sits below that. We've also introduced these elements we're kind of referring to as chimneys. Um, in one, one location, it is a chimney, the south of fireplace. But in other places, it's actually a visual cue to start to indicate the industry. And it starts to refer to some of those chimney braces that you start to see in other parts of the Pioneer Settlement, in particular the chapel, which is an elevation here. Um, again, the proposed um, building is lower than those other elements in Pioneer Settlement. So we're not bigger in height, we're respecting the characteristics of the place. Um, in the response. Um, can we go through to the view from the gym? Um, yeah, that one. That's kind of it. That's the end of my presentation. Um, I like this image though, I just want to look at it. Yeah, all right. Look, an opportunity to ask questions if you like. We've got um, the architect here. I've been here a while this afternoon. So has anyone got any questions? And look, this um, the stuff will be put on our webpage, so you can look on the council webpage, mm -hmm. have a look at it, so you don't have to take photos. But you're more than welcome, there's stuff over there looking afterwards. And if you don't ask questions in a public forum, by all means, um, 
that will be here till um, 1 o'clock. It's from 11 to 1, the, um, this presentation. So we're going to be hanging around for a little while if you don't want to ask a question. But is there any public questions you want to ask? Yes, thank you. Yeah, I've got three, actually. That's all right. First one is toilets. It took me a while to find out where they were. Yeah. If you've got two busloads of kids in that space, and they have to work, walk through the main entry to what I assume is the toilet block in the north section. Mm -hmm. Bad move. Yeah, that's, you need that toilets down mentioned. where those seats are. Yeah. Um, and that's just for any group situation, mm -hmm. yeah, I would expect. I yeah. don't know how that fits your design. Uh, so the, the back of house area is under development. Um, yeah. So we're, we're reconfiguring that at the moment, in part um, in response to feedback that we've received from Pioneer Settlement staff about how their operations will work. Yeah. Um, but So the short answer is <coughs> they're moving at the moment and we'll take that advice under advisement. Yeah. Okay, the other thing is that picture of the roof. No problem with it, but gable design, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six points of water entry into that building during a heavy rainstorm, which swamp or gets. Mm -hmm. We might only have 12 inches of rain or less, but when we get it, it's an inch in 15 minutes. Yep. Are those gable lower points designed to take that sort of rainfall and they, clear it off the roof line? Yes, um, they will be. Yep. Um, so the so basically that's a, a design development issue yep. as to the, the width and depth of those box covers. Yep. Um, there's a requirement under the National Construction Code that we calculate the peak rainfall event um, in any 50 years and then we design the box cutter to suit that. Um, so that's that's just kind of standard yeah. technical yeah. requirement. But the, the kind of <coughs> probably the more relevant response to that question is that um, the, the box cutters terminate outside the building. Any overflow event um, overflows outside the building naturally right. or by, by design. The down pipes are on the Monash Avenue side. So if ever the box gunners do overflow, they overflow outside the building. And the other one is noise mitigation. I love the concept you've got of taking that flooring all the way through the building from outside. And we're talking about hard surfaces inside yes. a building where there's a lot of traffic flow. Yes. I've become very aware of noise in buildings due to a husband with issues about noise. <coughs> And I'm just conscious that that will come as a very loud, noisy area, unless you have some sort of sound abatement system in your ceiling or yes. soft furnishings or whatever. Yes. Is that uh, being considered? Uh, not yet, um, but it will. So um, at this stage, we're really focused on getting the shape, size, and external configuration of the building to a point that Heritage Victoria is satisfied with. Um, the internal, so the, the point you're making, is, you're making is really, really important and it's something that's on our radar. Um, we will look at, um, in particular, noise mitigation through the ceiling surfaces um, and we may look at using products like Ortex, which is a um, recycled uh, PET bottle um, system, which has really good noise abatement qualities. We'd also look at introducing soft furnishings throughout that space to absorb that reverberant noise. Um, we're conscious that we probably so we almost certainly won't go carpeted surfaces because of the um, traffic and the yeah. issues with... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and <laughs> there's not durable enough for that sort of space. But we'll look at using other surfaces to address the, the noise, particularly the rever reverberant noise, and with, you know, dozens of kids running around. Um, my daughter's 11, I don't know how loud she can be. Um, so yeah, very conscious of that, and it's something we'll look at. Anyone else? Yep. Access to the coach house. Um, it appears there that it's going to be blocked off, so we're not going to be walking through the mm -hmm. coach house, is that? Um, so at the moment, um, we're showing that side as mm -hmm. um, part of the service area mm -hmm. with access to the coach house from the other side of the coach house. Oh, that's not how a coach house works. Sorry. Yeah, no, you're, you're right. right. Yeah. Well, look, you've got the Coco coach building mm -hmm. next to the coach house. Mm -hmm. Historically, Coco coach building post office coach house was the yes. centre of all yes. old towns. That's how we started from. That was the first well, place. The train and the wharf as well. Yeah. First place they gave the mileage from us, the centre. Yep. Yep. Is it possible Doesn't for the, the service lane that you're going to put there when that's not being used for yes. trucks yes. or whatever, be open so that yes. coaches can still yes. go through? Like, yes. And as it is now, yes. they, they, they go through with the vehicles and that. 
how many times? Awesome car come through a coach house. It has to come through both ways. It can't quick, be reversed. Quick turn, yeah. Um, so we're uh, talking with the pioneer staff, sorry, pioneer staff, staff about how <coughs> to develop people through that. Um, and it's certainly possible that when um, you don't have a garbage truck or whatever in that space, or you've put bins through it, that would leave those gates open. Um, those operational issues we need to address. Um, and how that service area works is something that we look at um, in detail. So Next one. Uh, yeah. It appears that the windmill is staying where it is. Uh, that's outside of Pasco. Well, every photo, every picture yeah. you take. It's, it's not moving at this time. There's no yeah. attention moving. Um, angle chimney tops. Yeah. yeah. We had a, um, a comment from a councillor uh, about that issue, yeah. and we'll look at that. Beautiful. Yeah. That's, yeah, certainly not in line with the. Um, sorry again, also uh, the timber internally, that's the walls, there's going to be no plaster or anything? Um, we haven't resolved what the internal um, finishes of the walls are. Um, there's an ongoing conversation with both Pioneer Settlement staff but also the First Nations Advisory Group yeah. around um, incorporation of, uh, kind of artwork and things like that. Yeah. That will affect how we, what finishes we put on those walls. Whether or not there is um, permanent artwork in, incorporated into building design, or some of those walls become um, effectively uh, hanging space for uh, a rotating collection. So, I'm, short answer is I don't know. I'm sort of thinking like the steel house and how partially, partially what well, a lot of the houses in those times were drawn with the old newspapers and things, you know, the visual effect entering, the, to have a space where there's a wall with from an old building that's been put there to show people. Yep. You know, look to, as you're going in to say that you're going, this is something that you could be seeing as yep. you're going along. Yeah, so we're, we're conscious of um, the, not attention, but balancing um, between having... Old and new. Oh, both old and new, yeah. but also space for um, temporary display of different things. So you may have parts of the building that are kind of permanent, yep. like and show that sort of um, stuff. But there's also like a requirement to, for the ability to have um, changes to that and refresh it, so that yeah. when new visitors, sorry, visitors or come, come back, back yes, exactly, yeah. um, you might have different displays about historical information, but you also might have displays about um, the cultural information about um, uh, occupation of this as a place over the last 60,000 years as well. So it's kind of having both sets of those yeah. information. And, and myself being a 60s kid and seeing that gem coming in, it's about what we know is already there and being able to impart our information from every year that we've been to new people to come in. Yep. And you go and there's something different and you think, hang on a minute, why has this changed? Mm -hmm. So, you know, like, yes, I get it that people, things change all the time, but when you're in an existing area as such as this, you, you need things that are stagnant too. Yeah, yeah it's, I think it's about celebrating both. Yeah. John. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Les. I've got great respect for the amount of uh, research you've done. You do bear in mind the 1870 1930 time frame, which is almost etched in concrete at Piney Settlement. My first impression of your buildings, which you put a lot of research into, is that it's a bit repetitive. When you look from here, it's quite repetitive. Whereas Piney Settlement is a collection of a lot of other buildings, which are individual. I admire the things that you've put thought into, but it looks to me, in Piney Settlement, in the, set, in the, in the environment, very repetitive. Now, I would like to see it broken up a little bit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven hips, gables. <clears throat> it does need some break in that, I believe, to make it match in the environment. Because after all, you're putting something new in that something that's very old. And the, you can't, we, <clears throat> we can't alter history. There's lots of people who want to alter history, including some of our councillors. You cannot alter history. That's etched in concrete. And so your appreciation of history has got to be accurate. 
because there will be people watching what, and are watching what you do. Uh, after 14 years as chair of the Pioneer Settlement Authority, before it came anywhere near council, I know all the difficulties with bringing buildings in and a lot of buildings taken out of Pioneer Settlement should still be there. And that's happened since council management come in. We need community approval for this, this new building, this new concept. I don't think we've got it yet. And the responsibility of that is really council and yours, Liz. But you're given the, given the poison chalice, so to speak, of being able to make that match. That's a big job. Yep. That's and if you want some help from back in the 60s, I'm available to you. Thank you. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a big job, but it's also a big responsibility. And we're, we're very aware of that as a responsibility to the community. Um, I do know that the, the heritage, so our, our principal challenge is to navigate Heritage Victoria's um, assessment process and their, their guiding principles. <coughs> what they're um, interested, or sorry, what they're obligated to assess is how we're responding to those heritage um, uh, characteristics, the characteristics of the existing place in its um, period from 1840, principally through the 1870 or the 19th century more broadly, um, and how we translate that into a contemporary insertion. Um, so we, we met with Heritage Victoria several weeks ago um, and showed them where we're at and the, the strategy that we're actually responding to those <laughs> principles. Um, and their feedback to date has been very positive. They're, they're obliged, sorry, their guiding principles effectively state that we can't do replica reports there. So we need to kind of balance the um, requirement for something contemporary with the analysis and response to them of the existing conditions. Um, but we'll certainly take uh, that feedback on board and look at it as, as we develop the project. <clears throat> it is fortunate we've got that protection. <clears throat> it was applied for by Ross Mellow, who was one of the original council elders mm -hmm. that along with Jack Conn, prominent member of this community back in the 60s, early, and even in the 50s, um, that put a lot of unpaid work into getting this established and, and it got it operating. Mm -hmm. So the responsibility of it is of this era of community to maintain that. And I, I will, I'm happy to help you with whatever I can from my experience here to be able to marry the, all of those factors together. Yep. So that it satisfies Heritage Victoria, but also satisfies the locals here, people that were born here and worked for free for a long time to keep Pony Settlement operating and moving. Okay. So thank you for your efforts. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, John. Yeah. Uh, just wanted to agree with what John said about being repetitive. <coughs> My great grandfather's old house at home, which was built around nine, first built around 1900s, probably 1905. It's three gables like that. One section, earlier section, is aged timber. Mm -hmm. the next section, is sawn timber. And the further section, there's an alleyway between. That's mud brick. Mm -hmm. So it was over. That's how houses were built back then. As the families grew, the house grew. Yep. wasn't built. Yep. That's right. Yep. Yep. Well, um, are you aware of the Swan Hill Time Machine Facebook page at all? No. I'm no. Not. Well, no. It's, it's a private group. You'd have to apply to join it. Yep. But it has a lot of old photographs of buildings in Swan Hill, large buildings mm -hmm. that are now gone, mm -hmm. and that could give you a few. Yep. Could I add to that, uh, the Reese buildings, which are a replica in the Pioneer Settlement, mm -hmm. that, those buildings, the, the, architect, or the, the design of that came off the originals, which is still in Campbell Street. Mm -hmm. uh, you, there's a couple of shops there that it might be interesting to have a look at that yep. as an original. <coughs> And the Reese, they were called the Reese buildings yep. in that time. Yep. We'll check that out. Yep.
All right, any other questions, folks? Can I have a question? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. I'm just, I'm just curious, is there uh, some sort of other purpose for the chimneys? Yep. Um, so the, the one to the northeast, this one, um, we, uh, we're currently proposing that that's a, um, for use as a fireplace. So it's an outdoor fireplace that you can have a fire in. So that is an operational chimney. Um, that will be subject to council's uh, OHS feedback. Um, but that's not what we're proposing at the moment. Um, the one on the other side near the entry um, will accommodate meters, <coughs> sorry, service meters and um, uh, fire hose wheel boosters if we need them. We need to get some more advice from the services engineer as to whether or not we need fire hose rooms. But if we do, then we need those on the frontage and they're always yeah, hard to hide <laughs> um, and <laughs> hard to make look good. So we're looking at that element as a way of hiding some of that stuff that we need on the facade, but also using its vertical format as a place to put building signage as well. So it becomes a, a, a sign to where to look for the entry. Jackie. Uh, G'day everyone. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just I was thinking how it doesn't so modern and new, and is it possible that you would use um, recycled materials? Yes. Bricks, because I think that would help. Yep. Um, For example, the bricks. Yes, that, that is definitely something we can look at. Um, we're um, very conscious, I mean, just more broadly, um, in addition to the aesthetic and the quality of those, about um, minimising material use where we can, and um, trying to recycle materials where possible. Um, we will definitely look at using recycled bricks. Um, whether or not uh, we can source enough locally or whatever, but that's something we'll, we'll talk about with council staff um, as a project develops. You could even have a, um, a collection, like put it out to the community to donate your bricks that you've got around. Yep. Some people have original Swanhill bricks. Yep. Um, and also there's a place in Chipper called Melbourne Timber. Mm -hmm. The yes. stockpiles, yes, that beautiful was... timbers from old buildings yes. and bridges. And... Yep, <coughs> um, that was the next thing I was going to say is the, the timber um, materials we'll definitely look at recycling as well. Um, particularly some of those bigger elements for the columns mm -hmm. and some of the beams. Mm -hmm. There are some challenges with using recycled timber in terms of their structural grade, um, but we'll we'll look at like one we'll look at the feasibility of doing that, and it's certainly something we would like to do if we can. I think it would make the building sit within its place much mm -hmm. better. Yes, yeah, we agree. Yep. So there's also um, I know lots of people and groups have done fundraisers, and people have donated money to put part their names on papers mm. and things like that that would yep. be. Added bonus for like cost crowdsourcing. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we can definitely look at that. There's, I'll have to talk to council staff about how that works with the tender process, but that's certainly something we can look at. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, cost cutting, as far as that's concerned, I know that there'd be heaps of people who would donate a brick or whatever, yeah. for paving or whatever. What's your actual dimensions of that building? Dimension table. Uh, can I take that on and pass me? Basically, I don't want to give you the wrong answer. Um, no, no, I mean, I'll, I'll take a guess to it. Uh, the, can we go back to the plan? Um, is that, can we go back to the plan? Nicola, can you remember what the, what the column width is? Square meters. <laughs> square meters is 600 um, square meters. Um, but the column grid. Yeah, okay. Um, so. Because you've taken out the rose garden completely, yes. haven't you? Yes. Yeah. So uh, that's the, so I'll give you the, the 600 square metres. Um, I am really great to give you a linear dimension, oh, okay. but I will give me 10 minutes and I'm going to check it. Um, the, the other thing to note is one of the requirements from Heritage Victoria is um, what's called a reasonable economic use assessment, which um, basically says that what is the minimum size that this building can be to ensure um, the ongoing success of Pioneer Settlement as a um, commercial entity? Um, and what are the sizes of the different bits and how do they all go together? Um, so the brief that we're working on is um, 600 square metres, which was um, provided by council, but that reasonable economic use assessment will determine what is the minimum size. And that's, uh, sorry, Heritage Victoria looks at that very, very closely because they've expressed the same um, 
not concerned, but they, they want to ensure that it's the appropriate size to do what it needs to do. And are the hospital gates being kept or lost? Or? Uh, my understanding is that they're being kept. Um, I don't know, I, I don't think it's been determined where they'll go yet, um, but my understanding is they are being kept. Well, the so, roses, yes. Will the roses be transitioned transitioned here, moved around? Or they'll be the roses transplanted yeah. somewhere else? Um, they'll be just ripped out. Yeah, that, that, that is the idea to move them somewhere yeah. else. Yeah. They're not being, yeah. They'll just be relocated. Yeah. Yeah. Is it possible to move the building further uh, south so that you haven't abutted it so close to the um, coach house? Coach house? Coach house? Um, we can oh, probably yeah. probably a couple yeah. of meters at most. We're we're getting close to about as close as we can get to the rotunda without causing concern for Heritage Victoria. Yeah. Um, I actually suspect if we go to any closer, they'll start to express concern about that. Um, but we do need that that economic use assessment, um, which will determine the maximum footprint. If that comes back and um, the building can be smaller, we would reduce it a percent and pull it back this way. I was going to say that the need for the gate and fence there, when this one would be here, you, you possibly negate the use of that. We're, we're conscious about um, this one serving a slightly different function to the other one. This one's really about um, service so vehicles. Yeah. 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 Um, whereas <coughs> this one can operate um, to allow people in and out of uh, the precinct without necessarily going through the building. Um, my understanding is that there's a proposal at the moment yes. for this part of the precinct to be able to operate in an event mode. Yeah. Um, so, and then you close off the entry to the pine. So yeah. A number of years ago, those temporary fill, the fences we fold up, do you open up the lower Murray in and close it off, that sort of it, so you can have a fence there, not let on people into the cell, same as the other end. To be able to use that green space for an event, or maybe a you know, pirate now, but they're actually going into the cell without actually having access to that for the thing, so. Yeah. And, and that could happen here as well, then yeah. having that gate there. Yeah, so we're... Because it could serve the dual purpose. Uh, if we don't be able to have access for the coaches and vehicles and whatever mm -hmm. to come in and out of there, mm -hmm. then it would be aesthetically great to have a gate that you could walk there. there it would be separate again for... They'd obviously have a, a, a section to be able to back in for vehicles and things, mm -hmm. but if we've got enough room for the... <coughs> vehicles to come in and out of the coach, or there'd be enough room for the people. <coughs> yeah, we can definitely get people through here. Yeah. Uh, we're just kind of conscious that this is going to be full of um, AC units and a whole bunch of other but stuff. But it appears that there'd be a, oh, well, sorry, no, that is just a the line to say where there's a fence. It could be fenced off. Uh, yeah, yeah, we could do that. Um, so that's something we'll talk about with uh, Pioneer Settlement and how they, um, and Council actually, about how they want that space to operate. Um, we do need a fence to form a line of enclosure for the mining settlement. Um, so whether or not that goes across to and touches the rotunda. Okay, so the rotunda is going to be half out of the settlement itself? Um, at the moment, there's a, a fence that goes around the back of the rotunda here. Correct. Um, so we'll well, it doesn't go that way, it's a straight line yeah. at the moment. Uh, I was looking at it yesterday, it kind of follows the edge of the um, rotunda, the new fence. Okay, well. I think. Anyway, yeah. we'll check. Um, so whether this fence actually touches the rotunda or follows, or we keep the existing one and we butt into it, um, or <coughs> the fence comes down a little, we're quite keen on the idea of having um, some public space here and having that planted out to kind of give a bit of relief to the facade or the, the street. The rotunda there. was originally the um, cafe yep. when it was first put there, and there was another rotunda being further near there. I believe there was three. Yeah. Well, yeah, there was yeah. one that had cars, vehicles, yeah. and I think. This, uh, Another question? Might not be for you, but what underground services is there where that building is, that footprint is, they're going to be relocated because yep. the edge of the rotunda is where all the power box is there. Yes. Um, my understanding is there's a, uh, a design from PowerCore um, that's been prepared to introduce a new power connection to this part of the precinct. Um, so there's some discussion around whether or not that could be an on-pole transformer or a kiosk um, to provide the power to both this building and to uh, this building, the art gallery. 
Um, I believe that's the kiosk is kind of embedded in this area. So it's more or less in the same spot, but the, the power supply to both, to this part of the precinct needs to be upgraded to um, meet the requirements of the new build, the two new buildings. Um, through the Rose Garden, um, the uh, survey information that we have at the moment is there's very limited underground services in this part of the precinct, um, except for power, and the power needs to become rehashed in relation to this building in the, the art gallery. Jackie? Yeah, um, because there were three rotundas, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure if anyone knows here about whether that rotunda was originally where Roy Grounds wanted it or proposed it, but would you put to Heritage Victoria to move the rotunda we did. closer yeah. to the river or? Yeah, we did. They didn't like it. No. Not at all? No. Like, very I'm not sure what the community thinks about that idea. Really. Yeah, they, they, it doesn't they, matter so, really. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they, they were very vigorous in their opposition to moving it. Do not want any movement of the rotunda. Yeah. 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 Um, which was interesting because we weren't proposing to. And the, there was a, it was the first item and then the responses do not move it. Um, which was interesting. <coughs> it's a great pity we didn't have heritage listing yes. when the bond store was uh, torn down and burned. Oh, okay. Yeah. They said there was white ants in it. Right. Murray Pine re rejects white ants. That was the railway station at Wurden and South right. that came in there yeah. as the bond store. We lost that, unfortunately, to one single person's decision. Right. All right. Yep. The back. Yep. The question for you is: yep. Early on, regarding the window, this is a question of where they're located. No, it's not. And no. You said answer no, there was a, there stuff. was discussion I, months years ago, probably when yeah. we first started the place. The train and the whole bit was they talked about moving. None of that is moving at this stage. There's no plans to move any of that kind of at this stage. At this stage. Well, stage. well, I can't guarantee what's happening in the future. Yeah, sure. I'm going to die in the future. I can't get, I'd like to know what it was. I'd like to the last chicken bounce, but I, I can't guarantee that. So I'm not going to go that far. Right. But there's no plans to move them at the market. All right? So, um, and look, as John pointed out, it's heritage listed now, which, you know, that's an asset. But at the same time, we've got some drawbacks with it because we've got to deal with heritage to talk about. So as far as these consultation sessions go, we're taking on board everyone, what everyone's saying. But ultimately, we've got to listen to what they're saying as well. They've got to be the input as well. So, yeah, just be mindful of that. That's a whole process. So, well, there's, be you. there's benefits and, yes. and negatives to it. Like, you know, there's some things like, as I say, move the right under, it would be great. They don't want it, so we can't do that. We've got to work around their guidelines as well. So, yeah. Uh, all right. Oh, yes, over there. Yep. Well, I can't be lying, I'm sorry. You, you're all right. So, um, area number six. So, just what was that area? Was that area that three rooms? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, it's. Um... <laughs> Yeah, yes. it, it could be. It, it's, it's for large groups when they come in here. You yeah. could be have three rooms, break up into three rooms, right. or have a large group. Use it for a multi purpose. The idea is you can bring people in and not even actually go into the cell with it, so we can hire that area out as well. So just multi use. It's a yeah. multi use area. Right, which so is more the reason for toilets. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. Not really designed as an introduction, like you walk in material. Well, it could be, yeah. Yes, 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 both. Yeah, yeah. Half yeah. yeah. Heartbreak of the Murray stuff in there, yeah, that stuff yeah. that walks in. Right, and this is why we're going to come in and talk about toilets. Yeah. So, someone was saying, so where are the toilets? They're not. Oh, they're right there, back at the toilets. Toilets are currently shown here. Oh, I see. Um, and we're in discussion with council officers about the configuration of those yeah. with regards to how ticketing and the ticketing might that's why this is shown as kind of in development because we're rehashing all of it um, at the moment based on that. So, that the moment says it's like a house, so yes. that looks like a huge area. So, that's that's in development. So, that's broken up into offices for the staff who run um, Pioneer Settlement and this part of the building, uh, offices for um, the people who run the Aboriginal Cultural Tourism offer on Fentil Island, uh, staff kitchen, well, kind of staff room staff toilets, general toilets, and storeroom, and other things. So it's, it's about Are six of them. those things that you said? <coughs> yes. Do they already exist in the Pine and Settlement? No. No, no. no. Well, the two-storey buildings down there above the shops has got offices, isn't it? So um, the offices are for <coughs> um, the VIC staff and the post office function for the Visitor Information Centre, which is relocated here. 
the um, toilets are to additional toilets um, for visitors. Um, we're like anticipating an increased visitor numbers and we'll need more toilets. Um, this, the, the office associated with Pentel Island, that's a new offer that's part of uh, the precinct and needs uh, of the administration functions associated with that. What was the other thing I said? Storing. Oh, storing for merchandise um, and other uh, stuff that's going in there as well. As well as our waste rooms and things like that. So it's basically all the stuff that happens um, that the visitors don't see. So basically, just more more offices for points and like. No, there's only only one one only office. Only if, only if um, one that had the toilets and that on it. You had a slide that had the toilets, so that people can. Sh I don't know. So yeah, yeah, there was one on the next slide. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, it's only a couple of ones with the entrance and stuff. Okay. Yeah, there was a plan and it had toilets. Can we go forward three slides. Oh. Back. No. Nah. There was a plan, one with a plan, and had the toilets all yeah, drawn on. Yeah, back another one, another one. So that's going forward, so go the other way. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we've got toilets here. Um, this is storeroom, uh, delivery room, waste room, staff kitchen, kitchen and toilet, first aid room, um, and there there's four offices at the moment. Just um, give us a bit of... Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all of that has been reconfigured. Um, the area is going to be broadly the same, but we're re rearranging it to make sure it works better with visitor flow, basically. With the possibility of the toilets being yeah. on the other end, so that people from exactly can... yeah, yeah that, that's what we're looking at. Um, so yeah, there definitely needs to be toilets down this other end, but that access there, as the lady said, kids run it through. Yeah. I take the point people are making about the coach house, but the problem is if you're going to have that as a vehicle exit entrance, even from the coach house, there's no way you want to put pedestrians in there. Yes. You need to have separate pedestrians. But the vehicle, so I'm thinking, would be after out of hours deliveries and things like that, not necessarily. More, more realistic to me to get rid of that gate down there than to make more room with it. We can, we can yeah. look at how that works. Yeah. Good job. Yeah, I was just going to say, it's, it's a wedge-shaped building. Mm -hmm. If you shortened the northern end and widened it, you have the same area, and then the concerns about the coach house would disappear. We're, we're kind of limited by those view corridors of Heritage Victoria as identified. Yeah, yeah you missed one of the first ones, right? Do they have the view from the rotunda through the settlement and from Jim yeah, through right. the settlement? Yeah. Hence, that's the zone right now. So you couldn't come out onto the road a bit? As much as we'd like to. Um, huge area of a bus park, just take it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. go on the ground. Well, well, the yeah. building at the, uh, the leisure centre at the uh, showgrounds that was built across the road. Of course it was, yes. And yes. yes. stopped. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, completely blocking it, yes. All right. Looks so like the questions are wound up. Um, Look, thanks for you coming on today, it's been great. As these plans unfold, they'll be on our website, so as well as you can have a look and have a look again on the website, have a look at that. There's, there, we're not kicking out the door yet, there's the um, plans over there as well, in hard copy, you can have a look at that. And if you want to have a talk to him by himself or the councils, Jackie turned up a little bit later, I just didn't recognise before Jackie when I first yeah. came in. So, yeah. Yeah, so Jackie, Kelly and yourself, if you want to ask us as councils <laughs> anything, but I'll take on board what I'm saying and what John's saying. Like, as councillors, yes, we've got to be well playing to make sure we get this right. And I think we, I believe we are heading in the right direction from the um, original thing because that's what the community want that big building in the middle of. So. And we are yeah. being consulted, not shown what's going to happen. <laughs> that's an interesting new word, consultation. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, look, thank you very much for your attendance and we well, always enjoy the rest of your day. And have a look at the plans to go on. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. Thank you.